Hey guys, there was a study done recently in the UK uh, by an organization called The Reading Agency, which recently found that 41% of adults have lied about the books that they read. I'll link an article about the study down below, and it lists the 13 top books that British adults are most likely to have lied about reading. So I've seen this really fun trend going around on BookTube, where BookTubers will t go through the list and talk about which ones they've read and which ones they haven't, and if they they've lied about any of the books that they read. I first saw this on Cherry Walker's channel, so I will link her video down below. The first one is a book series. It's the James Bond series by Ian Fleming. And I think maybe British people have more of a feel more of a pressure to have read these because James Bond is a British agent. I don't know, but I've never read these. I've actually never been tempted to read them, and I've never been tempted to lie about having read them either. I'm not a huge fan of Daniel Craig's portrayal of James Bond. I don't know. I really liked Sean Connery. He was my favorite. Anyway, so I haven't been that into James Bond for a while, and I think it's just because the film adaptations haven't really like drawn me in. The second one is The Lord of the Rings Trilogy by J.R.R. Tolkien. I have read these. Um, I read them a really long time ago, back when the films were coming out. I was pretty young then, so it, I'm probably due for a reread, to be honest, because my guess would be that a lot of those, um, a lot of the nuances kind of went over my head. I was in, like, junior high school at that time. Um, I have reread The Hobbit since then, which I think is just such an adorable book. It's so, like, cute. I don't know. I just love it. Up next is The Chronicles of Narnia by C.S. Lewis. And again, I read these, I read these when I was even younger than when I read uh, the Lord of the Rings trilogy. I was a child. Um, I have reread The Magician's Nephew and The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Um, more recently, I think I was in college when I reread those, but I'm probably due for a reread again because honestly, a lot of what happened in the series is a little bit fuzzy to me. Number four is The Da Vinci Code by Dan Brown. I have never read The Da Vinci Code. Let me know if you have and would you recommend it? Number five is The Hunger Games by Suzanne Collins. So I have read The Hunger Games, and I read Catching Fire, and I loved it, and I actually DNF'd the third book, Mockingjay. I didn't like it. I don't know. There was no PETA. Gail was super annoying. The, other, the first two books kind of followed a pattern, and the third one didn't have that same pattern. Number seven is The Wizard of Oz by Frank Baum, and I read the most gorgeous copy of this book. I think the publisher was Juniper Books. I'll link the version down below. It was just, it was absolutely gorgeous. I can't recommend it enough. So The Wizard of Oz is a children's classic. I actually, the very first time I read it, I thought it was like an adaptation for children. I didn't realize that it is actually a children's book. Number eight is Bridget Jones's Diary by Helen Fielding, and I've never read this one. I did really enjoy the movie, and if you've read the book, how different is it from the film, and would you recommend it? Number nine is The Girl with a Dragon Tattoo by Steve Larson, and Honestly, I don't even know what this book is about. I didn't see the movie. Uh, when the movie came out, I, I didn't see the movie, but when it came out, I was in a huge reading slump. I didn't read for like a few years in my life for fun anyways. I didn't really read. And so I kind of missed all of the hype uh, surrounding this book when the film came out. So I don't know what it's about. If you'd recommend it, let me know. Number 10 is The Godfather by Mario Puzo. This one is the most interesting one for me because when I first was going through the list, I was like, oh yeah, I've read The Godfather. It's a great book. And then I started trying to think about when I had actually read it. And I realized, I don't think I've actually read this book. I think I've lied to myself about having read it, but I don't think I actually read it. It's like one of those lies that you tell yourself for so long that you don't even know it's real anymore. The reason I think I feel like I've read it is because... The Godfather is my husband's favorite book of all time ever. He's obsessed with it. And so he's talked to me about it all, all the time. And I think I've read like excerpts or parts of his favorite parts of the book, but I don't think I've actually sat down and read it. I don't think I've read it. I've seen all of the films. I've seen them multiple times, but I don't think I've actually read the book. Number 11 is One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest by Ken Kessie, and I have read this book. I really loved it. So I first encountered this story when I was taking a film course, and the there's a film adaptation that came out, I think, in 1975. The film is so good. I think it's Jack Nicholson's best work ever. It's really, really good. 
Um, so I would recommend that I'd actually recommend the film over the book. The book's still really good. Um, it's a very profane story, so if you're sensitive to language, I would I would skip it. Um, but it's about a mental health institution and one man's experience in it. So I really enjoyed this story. Number 12 is Gone Girl by Gillian Flynn. I have actually not read this. I am not a huge fan of thrillers in general, um, and I've never picked this up. And last but not least, number 13 is The Kite Runner by Khalid Hassini. This has been on my TBR list for quite a while. I've never picked it up because I've heard some reviews of people that actually didn't like it very much. They thought it was like really slow moving or they just didn't think it was particularly well done. So let me know what you think. I do want to read it eventually just because I kind of want to make up my own mind about it. But yeah, let me know what you thought if you've read it. So those are the 13 books that British adults are most likely to have lied about having read. Let me know down below which ones you have read and have you ever lied about reading a book? Do you feel that pressure from other people like you should have read something and so you fabricate it? As always, thanks so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.